Well, let's think about then, now that we have the idea of a firm, let's think about how firm would behave. So how does a firm behave? Well, there's a couple of models we can, we can use. We can think about a simple production problem. And my production problem, I'm going to think about what we'll call a production function. It's kind of like a utility function, but it's a little different, and we'll explain why. Production function, we'll think output, we'll call that y, inputs x1 up to xn. So our inputs are kind of like our goods that we had in our production problem in our utility maximization problem, sorry. And we have y equals f of x1 up to xn. It simply says the amount of output I produce is a function of the amount of each of the inputs I put in. Now one thing I should emphasize that often we don't talk much about in economics is this production function itself is the result of maximization already. Right? Everybody understands that. This is the maximum amount of output I can get from these inputs. Right? I've already kind of incorporated the idea that I'm using these inputs efficiently and producing the maximum output I can from a given set of inputs. I mean, it's not like it magically happens, right? Everybody understands this, right? Everybody, bake, everybody ever baked a cake? Right? Even if you had all the ingredients in the oven, if you didn't put them together right, you wouldn't end up with a cake, right? You'd just end up with a mess, right? That everybody understands just having all the inputs isn't sufficient to produce the output. Now, you might say, well, there's really another input, which is managerial skill or baker skill or whatever it is. But even if you had the skill, if you didn't use it, you wouldn't get the output. The point is, there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes behind the production function itself, right? Economists like to start with the production function, but in truth, there's a lot of maximization that's already gone on. How do I get the most out of the inputs I have? And we'll come back later and talk about technological progress, which can be thought in some ways as getting more outputs from the same amount of inputs. Okay, that's one way to think about technological progress. Is improvements in this production function and why can this production function change because it's itself the subject of maximization right okay all right so that's my model I'm gonna assume you're a competitive firm what do I mean by a competitive firm what I mean is there's a price of output and there's prices of inputs that I don't affect I am a price taker in the market just like my guy on the island was in NAFTA. So P is going to be the price of output. W1 up to Wn are the prices of the inputs. Think W standing for like the wage of those of, of the inputs. It's the price of the inputs. Okay? And now what's the difference so far with this in utility theory? Is there a difference already? Yeah. Well, that's part of it, but even more fundamentally, we can directly measure the output here, right? Because Right, so there are two real, those, that's almost a separate issue, right? One is, one is let's just say utility was, was, was ordinal, but I couldn't measure it. Well, then I would, right? So that's part of the issue. So one of the big issues, I think, in fact, the biggest issue I think of is that it, I can measure output, right? So that's something I couldn't do with utility. I had to infer utility, what was going on with utility, even if it was cardinal, I would have to infer it from his behavior. I couldn't, 
look at and see, well, geez, these are, here's the goods he's consuming, and I got my little utility meter that measures his utility. Here I look at the output of his factory, I can see how many widgets are coming out, right? I can actually see the output, so I can measure the output. Now, in addition to being ordinal, the other point is, and, and let me go a little further and we'll see where this comes in. 